Hailing from small town Texas, an aspiring star named Jamie King arrives in LA with dreams of celebrity, but little in the way of solid achievements. While working toward his big break, he helps his Aunt Helen and Uncle Junior with the once grand but now aging King's Tower. Charming but not quite in step with the flow of the hotel, his charisma and genuine love for his family might be what brings the tower back to greatness as he continues his own climb to the top. Still, that doesn't mean there aren't going to be a few bumps along the way. Premiering on the WB in 1996, The Jamie Foxx Show tapped into a familiar sitcom setup to introduce audiences to Jamie Foxx, but there was always a bit more to the show than met the eye. Using the tried-and-true comedy scenarios established by series like The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, Seinfeld, and Martin, it was clear from the jump that this was going to be a series uniquely its own. This is due in no small part to the charming supporting cast, propping up its heroes' more chaotic aspirations and mishaps. Yet, at the center of it all is the man with his name on the marquee. For a lot of audiences, this was their first glimpse of what Fox was capable of, and throughout its five seasons, it did not disappoint. Today, we know Fox to be one of the most versatile performers on the stage and screen, able to believably step from memorable roles like the hero of Django Unchained to the villainous Electro in The Amazing Spider-Man 2, all apparently without breaking a sweat. Yet, once upon a time, he was a promising up-and-comer without much of a resume to speak of outside of a handful of memorable but short-lived roles in shows like In Living Color and Rock. That is until he developed The Jamie Foxx Show, a WB sitcom that began airing in 1996 and lasted until 2001, with Fox playing a character not so unlike himself. Looking back, Fox's star power is evident from the get-go, but it took some time to develop into the leading man we know him as today. The Jamie Foxx Show played a huge role in his trajectory from guest star to man of the hour allowing him to flex his talents as a performer. This would lead to breakout roles, such as his turn as the problematic football star of Oliver Stone's Any Given Sunday, and the unlucky cab driver of Collateral, which got him a Best Supporting Actor nomination at the Oscars. From there, the rest is history, as Fox continued to turn out great performances in a number of iconic films. He might have accomplished all of this without the Jamie Foxx show, but having his name on one of the era's comedy sleeper hits couldn't have hurt. Much the same as other staples of the time like JNCO Jeans and Beanie Babies, the WB has gone by the wayside, but there are still plenty of fond memories to be had for anyone with a love for the era's sitcoms. Kicking off in the early 90s, the WB served as a sort of counterpart to Fox which had found success through introducing comedy series with a lean toward working-class protagonists, as well as UPN, which similarly came into being at a time of shifting regulations around media and syndication. Though it got off to a relatively slow start, it's hard to argue that it has had staying power in the public consciousness. Featuring the Merry Melodies deep-cut Michael J. Frog as its mascot, the WB's first program was The Wayans Brothers, starring Fox's fellow In Living Color alum, Sean and Marlon Wayans. More comedies were added to the slate, like the short-lived Unhappily Ever After, The Parenthood, Seventh Heaven, The Steve Harvey Show, and a whole line of shows aimed toward kids titled Kids WB. Although these shows were seldom referred to as especially successful in the ratings category, they all had dedicated fans and many of them managed to stick around long enough to make an impact. While The Jamie Foxx Show might never have been a rating smash, it was in good company on a programming slate that allowed it to stand out. Although it's well known to most Fox fans that he was supported in his interest in the arts by his grandmother, that isn't to say his climb to the top was totally straightforward. After getting a music scholarship, he took a surprise turn into comedy when urged by his girlfriend of the time to take the stage during a show. While music was moving slowly, comedy took off for Fox, and he soon landed his gig on In Living Color in 1991. This, in turn, led to a number of guest spots on sitcoms like Moshe and Hanging with Mr. Cooper, as well as small but noticeable roles in films like Toys, 
leading to a starring role in the comedy classic Booty Call. While Fox made his debut in supporting roles, it's also true that when we look back over his early days in the entertainment industry, nothing stands out quite so much as a clear desire to succeed on his own terms. In that vein, The Jamie Foxx Show is very much a Fox brainchild, co-created and produced through his production company, Fox Hole. While the company itself isn't overly active today, the title was used for Fox's Cyrus radio station, which featured comedians alongside hip-hop and R&B music selections. As the creation of Fox, alongside Bent Out of Shape producer Bentley Kyle Evans, the series is very much a Fox spotlight, catering to his unique talents. While it would be hard to argue that Fox is very much the star of the show, that's not to say that he's not working with a stellar cast of supporting actors. One of the most notable is Saturday Night Live alum, Garrett Morris, who became comedy royalty in the 1970s as one of the original cast members of the show that would go on to change TV history. By the mid-90s, Morris had been primarily appearing in the series Martin, playing one of Martin's bosses, until he was shot by a mugger in 1994. Necessarily written out of the series due to his hospitalization, Morris's next role was as Junior, the gambling, obsessed, but full of advice uncle of Fox's Jamie King. Fox may have become famous due to his top-notch comedic delivery, but that humor is entrenched in a genuine love for entertainment in all its many mediums. Lest we forget that Fox has a history as a serious musician, he is able to show off his love for music regularly throughout the series. This begins as early as the first episode, in which he gently teases his aunt for the lobby of the hotel, having fallen into shambles. She chides him, noting that all of the greats have performed there, which leads to Fox jumping into a top-notch series of impressions. The two break into song, singing Nat King Cole's hit, Unforgettable, before descending into laughter. While we tend to expect some level of emotional growth, even for the irreverent protagonist of a sitcom, one of the great features of The Jamie Foxx Show is that its whole cast isn't just likable. They all come across as real people, with their own unique experiences and dreams. Fox's character goes through a whirlwind of highs and lows with his career, but he's not the only one. His love interest, Fancy, goes through her fair share of ups and downs along the way, even nearly leaving the hotel at one point to pursue a career elsewhere before ultimately deciding that she can follow her dreams anywhere. As with most of the WB sitcoms of the time, the Jamie Foxx show isn't what would be referred to as a rating smash, but it had impressive staying power. Running for five seasons and ultimately calling it a day with its 100th episode, this series had a solid run from 1996-2001. Plenty of other sitcoms of the time faded long before a fifth season, so it's hard to deny that audiences showed up for this show, even if they did so in relatively small numbers. Today, the series is rarely directly referenced, but it served as a vital launching pad for many of its stars. While there might not be a reboot anytime soon, its writing and performances still made an impact. The fifth season of the series is short with only 12 episodes compared to the 20-plus episodes of prior seasons. By this time, other acting opportunities were calling, and the main story, arcs of the central characters, were running their course, making for a good time for the cast to move on to other projects. The series has never been released on home media in full, although there are out-of-print DVD releases of Seasons 1-4 available for those willing to hunt them down. Perhaps one of the more surprising callbacks to The Jamie Foxx Show doesn't occur in a Jamie Foxx property at all, but rather through an apparently throwaway line becoming the producer tag of engineer and beatmaker Pierre Bourne. Most famously appearing on Playboy Cardi's Magnolia, Foxx's unmistakable voice can be heard saying, Yo, Pierre, you want to come out here? The tag is also on Playboy Cardi's Dot That Shut, Uno the Activist's Free Smoke, and Trippy Red's No Way and Bitch Go. The tag quickly became an internet meme and helped boost Bourne's rising star, going on to work with rappers like Lil Yachty and Young Thug.